Sorry, man, but I'm having a hard time believing you. How can a racer not know every single inch of his own car like the back of his hand? If you don't know anything about it, where the hell did you get it from, anyway? Technically, this is my dad's car. He's the one who bought the engine, not me. I don't know anything he doesn't want to tell me, and that's a lot. I guess your dad must have a job in the racing industry if he was able to get his hands on a block this advanced. No, he owns a tofu shop. <sighs> How can a guy making tofu get a professional quality engine? It's not something you just up and buy from the store on a weekend. You know what? Fine. You should be getting plenty of power out of it, so I'm just as curious as you are. Do you mind driving me around for a little while so I can take a listen? It's the only way I can get a good feeling for it. So, what's the big plan? Have one? Hmm. Well, I figured it'd take at least a few weeks to a month for him to figure it out on his own. The boys had more than enough practice with it. Those parts you ordered arrived at my shop just the other day. Don't you think we should install them? I don't know about that yet. I was hoping to hold off on those until I got some sort of reaction from Takami. Huh? Uh, it's good he's trying to compensate with his technique rather than going for some easy fix. But to be perfectly honest, I figured he would have noticed by now. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Something's off. The shifting seems to be stalling out the acceleration. It has plenty of power when he reaches the rev limit. But every time he upshifts, he loses a lot of torque. This engine must be defective. It's a dud. There's no comparing it to my turbo. But why? This can't be its full potential. What the hell do you think you're doing? Again, why? Now I get it. It's so simple. <sighs> well, good news. I can tell you why you aren't getting very much power. The problem's pretty simple, and you should be able to fix it yourself. Uh -huh. There, you see that? The issue is with your tachometer. Tachometer? It's no good. Not for that engine. It doesn't go high enough. This is an engine that generates its most power at very high RPM, which is why they call it a high-rev engine. Professional, naturally aspirated engines are all like this. That's why pros use them exclusively. You know how you're getting a surge of power right before you shift? You're not revving it high enough. That red line's a couple thousand revs short. I'm pretty sure you've only been pushing it to around 70% of its full capacity. If I had to guess what this engine's capable of, I'd say at least 10,000 RPMs easy, if not more than that. A tachometer that only reads up to 8,000 is crippling your car's ability because you're not even coming close to the sweet spot. This puppy's a certified beast compared to the 8.6's stock engine. It's called a 4AG, but it actually has a 5-valve head that was adapted from the newer 101 series they just released. There's supposed to be a VVT device that switches the valve timing at both lower and higher RPMs. The fact that yours doesn't have one can only mean one thing. That this baby is in a whole other class, called a super high rev engine. While we were driving, I couldn't help but notice something else I thought was worth mentioning. The instrument panel you have is not only cheap, it's missing some important readouts you'll definitely need. At the very least, you'll want the water temp and oil pressure gauges. Whoever it was that did the installation on this engine has an impeccable knowledge of advanced auto mechanics. Both the tires and the brakes are perfectly balanced. Same goes for the body. It makes you wonder, why would the installer want to leave out essential gauges? And there's only one answer I can think of. I can't tell you why, but this engine's true power has been sealed off on purpose. Sealed off on purpose? It's a pretty reliable, albeit simple, way of doing it. Without a proper tachometer, a good driver would never make the mistake of over-revving, which eliminates the possibility you'll burn it out by going past the red zone.
In all my years of being into cars, I've always felt a kinship with other 8-6 drivers, but never once have I felt any hostility. Well, I'm not sure I can say that anymore. All I can say is I really want to be the one to beat you. It doesn't matter what you're hiding under your hood. The fact is you're lacking the basic elements any racer worth his salt should have. We'll settle this feud soon enough, and when we do, you'll never be able to brag about being undefeated again.